We're broadcasting from Secret, the coolest bar in downtown Toronto, and this is the LeDrew three-minute interview. My guest today is Reniza Sheik. She is a lawyer in downtown Toronto, uh, very prominent and smart. And Thanks, let me put this to you, because I want to talk about racism. Sure. You're a woman of color. Indeed I am, Stephen, and it's a term that I'm quite comfortable using. Okay, some aren't, so I'm glad that you are. Now tell me, have you ever been a victim of racism? In Toronto or in Ontario? Well, I'm born and raised here, and I'm proud to say that for, you know, 37 of my 39 years, the answer to that would have been no. But in the last couple of years, there are a few things that have happened on the outskirts of the GTA, uh, been called some derogatory names, luckily not in the workplace. Uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, Stephen, it really did erode my sense of security in just moments. So you were brought up in the GTA? Absolutely. And you've never felt that you were a victim of racism before the last two years? I was fortunate in that the area that I grew up in, the schools that I went to when I was a young child, they were quite racially diverse. And so I was insulated um, from, you know, some of what uh, others have to face, unfortunately. But you were also in the best part of, in the best sense of Canada, where the school is racially diverse. Absolutely. Lots of kids of different... Nationalities. And so I never felt like I was at the at a disadvantage. But when I got older and I was um, exposed, and particularly when my kids got a little bit older, I did have a couple of incidents that took place, again, in probably the last couple of years. So from that, would you say that racism is on the increase in Canada? I would absolutely say that it's on the increase from an optics perspective. And, I, and, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I think, you know, the biases that we hold, the prejudice that we hold, it's always been there. But I think, you know, the Trump effect, and so many people talk about this, I think the effect on this side of the border is it has really emboldened um, some of the racists here. And some of those racists, Stephen, unfortunately have a lot of power, whether it's political power, whether it's power because they're very wealthy people, and that emboldens those who were quiet in the past to say what they want now. And so do we have, there's been quite a debate over the last little while about whether there's racism. Of course there's racism. There's racism everywhere. But do we have systematic racism again? And what does that mean? To me, systemic racism is where it is almost invisible to the naked eye. And this is a question, Stephen, that I have had to answer for my young kids, 11 years old and seven, where you know racism that's systemic is not necessarily you know being called a derogatory term when you're out and about. Yeah. Systemic racism is being out in public, uh, perhaps with your children and people looking at you and you know holding a prejudice and you understand that look, but it's an almost invisible to the naked eye. That's systemic racism or being held back from an opportunity because you're a person of color, because you're a racialized woman and that I've been on the receiving end of unfortunately. That is unfortunate but thank you very much for not correcting me when I said systematic racism as opposed to systemic racism. Manira, Manisa, thank you very very much. My pleasure Stephen. That's the three minutes. Thank you for watching. We have many more interviews like that in production. We are going to be having the interviews that you will not see on the mainstream media. If you like it please subscribe. The LeDrew three-minute interview.